Hi guys, welcome back to another Unity Touch tutorial. My name is Devin, and today we're going to be improving our Touch Logic script. Um, there's a few optimizations that we can do, uh, and when you're working on mobile or web, uh, these performance optimizations can help. Also, there's a few things that I forgot to mention about the about using the script um, when I first did the tutorials, so I'd like to go ahead and uh, mention what those are now. Uh, alright, well, let's get started. Alright, so in Unity, real quick, I just have a button with this test button script, and that test button script has nothing in it, but it inherits from TouchLogic V2. Uh, TouchLogic V2 is just, it's exactly the same as our TouchLogic script, um, just organized a little better, and I've changed the name to TouchLogic V2. Um, Right, so let's talk about some of the issues that uh, that you might have noticed with the first one. Uh, right now, if I just go ahead and play, uh, if you keep your eye down in this console uh, console menu window, in this console window, when I tap anywhere on the screen, you'll see you get a bunch of error messages. Um, now those error messages, they're they won't really break the game, everything still works, it's just annoying to see your console flooded with error messages. Uh, so there's a few ways we could fix that. You could either uh, tell the send message command to not require a receiver, or we could do it a better way, which I will show you in a minute, and that is to override, use override methods. Um, and that's, that's more efficient than using send messages. Uh, so we'll get into that. So one issue that some of you guys were having was uh, this update function. Um, in this case, touch logic is our parent class and test button is our child class. You cannot have the same. Uh, you cannot have the same function name in your child class as you have in your parent class. Um, it's it's as if you were doing this, as if you were defining the update function twice in the same script, and uh, you can see that that throws an error. Uh, TouchLogic v2 update is already defined. Rename this member or use different parameter types. Uh, yeah. So to illustrate this point, I'm gonna just say print. Uh, right, so just when we when we play the game, we have that print line in our update. So every frame we should be getting ASDF over and over. But if we were to define update in here again. Um, that lot, that code that we just wrote, that print line, and all of our, all of our touch logic is not gonna fire off. Uh, we don't get an error for some reason. I'm not sure why that is, but yeah, you can see here, it's not, um, it's not accepting any of the, any of the touch logic that we wrote. So one way to get around that is. To rename this, uh, as as the error message told us before, to rename it. Uh, so we're going to rename this um, check touches. And then what we can do here is just in our child classes update check for the touches. And now, if we play, oh. Sorry about that. We need to make check touches public. So now if we play, we'll get all the ASDF messages and if we touch the screen, we'll get our awesome error messages. All right. So that's cool. Um, another benefit of doing it like this is you have total control over when uh, when in the frame Unity is going to check for touches. So say, like usually you'd want to do it at the top, 
Um, but say for whatever reason you need to do some logic before you check for the touches on the screen. You could do that up there. Uh, also, you could do something like this. Um, uh, you could real easily just set a public boolean or something else like uh, Let me just type this out and then I'll explain it later. Alright, so uh, you could do something real, uh, you could do something like this real easily where you just um, have a Boolean and you can set it to true or false during runtime and uh, disable the touch checks for this button. So say you have a, uh, a pause menu, or say you want to disable the character controls while some cinematic event is going off, you could just set disable touches to true, and then uh, and then this statement will be false, and it won't check for touches. So let's see that in action. Yeah, so... I can touch and I'll get all those error messages, but then let's clear that out and disable touches. And now if I try to touch, it's not gonna, it's not gonna send those touch messages anymore. Uh, yeah, so that's just kind of nifty to keep it off in its own little function. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this now. Um, all right. Next, let's move on to the override methods. Alright, so before, actually let me I never had a function for this, so I'm going to go ahead and make one. Um, Alright, so before we were doing this send message thing, and that's a little inefficient. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uncomment that regular function call And down below all of this, I'm actually going to make the onTouchBegan function. Floyd onTouchBegan, and then all right. So that's normally how you would write a function, but this is going to be a special function, one that we can override in our child class. Uh, so the way that we set that up is we have to say public virtual void and then in our child class we'll be able to override uh, and that's it so actually I'm going to comment this out for now and add in some stuff down here so I'm going to add in a print um, name is not using on touch began all right so this right here is just the default function I guess uh, this is what will happen if our child class does not define this function if it doesn't override it so if I were to play oops Oh, that's right. I go ahead and make one of these for on no touches as well. Uh, don't need a semicolon. So now if we play it and I touch the button, I'll still get all those error messages from the uh, from the other send messages, but I'll also get test button, which is this game object, is not using on touch began. Uh, so that's just what will happen by default. You can have some code in here. Uh, so 
you know, you don't have to have any code in there, like like here, I, I didn't specify anything, but if you want something to happen, if, the, if you didn't define anything in your child class, you can put it there. I'm going to go ahead and say something in here. Hello, from tests button. Uh, yeah, so now that we have that override function in there, it's not going to say test button is not using on touch began. Instead, it's going to say hello from test button. And there's all our errors, but it also says hello from test button. So that's how you do the overrides, and I'm just going to do that for all the other ones real quick. All right, so I just uh, copy and pasted this public virtual void for all of these functions. I'm going to do the same thing for everywhere else where it says this dot send message I'm gonna replace that with a regular function call and a public virtual uh, void and I'm just gonna go ahead and collapse this all down to one line to save space alright so I just did it again for all of these guys now that we have all of those filled out let's go ahead and play it in unity and we should no longer get any errors so we get no errors touching anywhere on the screen and if we touch the button, we'll get the hello from test button print line. All right, and the reason why we're no longer getting those errors is because we're not sending a message, um, so it doesn't need a receiver. And instead, we have these functions down here, and we're just calling them regularly, as we would normally call any function. Um, right, all right, another uh, optimization that we could do here is all of this ray casting and 3D physics stuff, all of these on touch began 3D functions, uh, we could go ahead and separate those into their own function, or into their own script. Because right now what's happening is for every object that in, every object that inherits from touch logic is going to be casting these rays from the, from the player's touch into the scene. Uh, so, say we have five buttons on the screen, or five uh, 3D objects with touch logic on it, we're going to have five rays being cast from the screen every frame, uh, casting into the scene to see if it hit something. Uh, so, we don't want that. We don't need five rays coming from the same point. We only need one. So, we're going to separate that out into... Uh, into its own script and attach it to one game object in the scene. And we'll do that in the next video, but I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of this 3D related stuff. Uh, we don't need this ray, and we don't need those. Alright, well that should do it. Um, I hope that helped. We, uh, we got rid of those annoying little error messages. We, uh, yeah, we got rid of those annoying error messages. We did it in a more efficient way. We got rid of those uh, 3D ray casting uh, lines, and we fixed this update uh, update problem. And we enabled this uh, disable touches thing, which is kind of neat. Uh, yeah, so. Hopefully that helps. Be sure to like and subscribe if it did. And don't forget, you can always download the scripts that we wrote in this tutorial and view the video on my website, devination.com. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.